Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mark from Solar Games, and today we're gonna to talk about um, just what the heck is happening with the Magic Market right now. Uh, yeah, so it's been a while. Haven't really made a video for a while. It's you know, kind of like Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, you know, all this holiday stuff. So doing things with family, obviously, enjoying myself, doing a bunch of like, I, I streamed. I casted a freaking tournament for Grand Archive, man. That's insane. Anyways, um, yeah, I know there's been a little lack of content, but we're, com we're coming back with some video. So first thing we're gonna talk about is the current state of Magic Market. So obviously, you know, me being a vendor, being a reseller of Magic cards, whatnot, um, it's something that I have to monitor very closely and have a like pulse on what the market's doing. Well, in general, if you look at what's happening in the uh, market for, I guess, cards that are legal and standard, the cards are doing well. In fact, I think a lot of booster boxes that should have rotated out of um, standard rotation are pushing higher on EV because the booster boxes are a little bit more rare now, scarce to get. Um, the cards have proven themselves to be good and they're useful. So. A good example of this is Neon Dynasty. Now, Neon Dynasty, out of the gate, everyone knew is a powerhouse set, um, having basically free spells on lands, sorry, not free spells, but like having spells on lands is pretty good. Um, <laughs> basically, at this point, we still feel the same way. I mean, Beseju is still holding strong as a rare at around like $30, $40. Um, and there's plenty of other cards in that set that are worth money, right? And then if you look at other sets since then, Dominary United has <sighs> Shieldred. Everyone, you know, a lot of you guys hate it. Some of you guys love it, but you know, Shieldred's there. That's a powerhouse in modern. That's a powerhouse in a ton of different formats, you know, including standard as well. So a lot of different things. And if you look forward to like things like Brothers War with all the, you know, retro artifacts that are pushing up in prices and holding box EV higher. And then even if we look at Locks Caverns of Ixalan, so, you know, as every single magic set, when they come out right at release, and then the release plus like a week or so, prices tank, right? And the prices tank because lots of cards are coming to market, um, and then, you know, everyone's kind of like buying, and there's enough supply. But as the decks and meta of the new cards are kind of figured out, and how the new cards play into the current meta, certain cards start being gobbled up again because they're needed for certain decks, right? This is what you see with every single trading card game, but more so with Magic because the honest truth is there's a lot of players in Magic, not so much collectors, right? Especially for the newer cards. So the newer cards, most people are buying to play, not to collect. Um, so you can see it in the pricing. A lot of the dinosaurs, a lot of the cards that I think a lot of people out of the gate kind of ignored are starting to shoot up in price. The cards that were good um, are, are now being reaffirmed by the market and pushing up again. There's like three or four rares inside Lost Caverns of Ixalan today that are worth more than $10. That's pretty freaking good, right? And then if you look at other sets too, you know, even Wilds of Eldring, which I think compared to Lost Caverns of Ixalan was a little bit weaker, but at the same time, there's still cards in that set that are also pushing up in price. So I think it's kind of like this, right? Magic recently had a really terrible kind of like dip and into the like valley of whatever, right? Everyone's super depressed reprints everywhere kind of thing. A lot of the market is really stressed. Basically that forced a lot of the players out of the magic game, if you will. Like not, uh, when, when I say, when I'm, what I mean by players, I mean uh, not the actual people who play the game, but the people who are more like, I don't know, investors who are trying to make a quick, quick buck on the game itself, right? If I buy a booster box, open it, sell it, whatever. Those people I'm starting to see drying up. I'm not saying they're all gone. There's a lot of them still believe in the market, but it's drying up. And so what essentially happens is that the supply side is now getting lower, right? And with the coast knowing now there's less of this product that's being absorbed. So essentially what's been happening is, you know, traditionally with the coast prints the product, sends it to distribution, distribution, then sells it to store, store sells to players, right? And it's kind of like how that cycle works. And then of course, Wiz the Coast decided to go directly to the players by selling it through secret layers or like, you know, the, the special like Barcelona packs, whatever, you know, all the Magic Fest, Magic 30 type of things. That's direct market. And then of course, Amazon making all this product available. There was a lot of glut of product. And because there was just a lot of product printed, what ended up happening is they had to do resort to things like Amazon dumps which lowered the price of the box, which lowers all the cards and had it made allowed more people access the the packs and 
honestly, there's a lot of dishonesty and like, you know, shadiness that happened with all the Amazon product that caused a lot of cards, singles, whatnot, to come into the market essentially for free. So if you think about how this works, right? If you have people doing shady things and they take boxes, open them for whatever, cards, repack them, ship them back to Amazon for a full refund, the cards they now have are essentially free, right? And then you take this, multiply it by many different people who are doing this, multiply by many times of them doing this, well, that puts a huge amount of cards now into the actual market, which allows then, of course, like the prices to fall. Essentially, that, that's what's been happening during COVID. Now that COVID, this whole era is kind of gone, and, and, and honestly, the profit margins of even doing something like that is lower compared to like maybe your risk vector of like Amazon catching you, do something against you, or at least just banning your account so you can't actually do that anymore. Um, so, you know, if you, so I don't know about this stuff, but like the people who apparently do a lot of returns, I've heard you actually get like banned by Amazon. You are no longer allowed to do returns or they won't give you a refund, whatever. So again, this is the whole back end system that I told you about before is that all consumers, there's like a, a consumer score type of thing where vendors know, like if you're trustworthy or not, depending on whatever, and they aggregate this data across many different websites. So it's not just one. So they're kind of tracking who you are a little bit too. Anywho, for those people, you know, kind of like <laughs> the chickens have come to roost and well, you know, if you keep doing shady stuff, you're no longer allowed to do that anymore. And so I think there is less and less of that. Now there's still some repacks, but you know, I haven't bought from Amazon recently, but the last time I bought from the dump, I think it was around like July of this year, uh, that last dump, all the boxes were fine. I mean, the last time I had issues with was with the Brothers War Collector's Booster, which I did a video on this channel a couple months ago. That's the last time I had problems with Amazon uh, booster boxes. Since then, they've been fine, right? And so what that's telling me is that Amazon's getting better about this whole system. So these free cards coming to market is lower. Then on the actual LGS side, during COVID, during all this you know kind of pandemic time, what I noticed is a lot of stores like that are pretty popular. Like there's one around me here um, in the Bay Area that does like membership, right? So they do a membership where you pay, let's say like 20 bucks a month, or whatever, for the, the highest tier of the membership. And that allows you essentially to pay basically distribution pricing plus tax, you know, whatever, for the booster boxes. Now the store is basically just earning money on the membership. They don't really care about giving you the boxes. So this brought a lot of product into the hands of like just players around the area which then essentially says, okay, now the pool of cards, because they're opening more boxes at very cheap pricing, right? Like equivalent to a store is higher, which means single prices will fall, right? So normally a store opening boxes, they have an advantage because they're paying, let's say $80 a booster box back then pricing, right? And they can open essentially like $120 worth of singles and then they bring up to the store and sell and they can convert that pretty quickly because they have players kind of coming in and out of the store, uh, coming in and out of the shop and area all the time. What happened during COVID, during all this like stores, mad rush selling their stuff for cheaper, caused a lot of these cars to come to market at a very cheap price. And so you had a bunch of flood of singles in the same market that the stores are operating because these are just local folks that are buying your boxes. They're converting those cars to singles. They're selling it back to the peers who would have normally have bought from the store are no longer doing that, right? And so that forces the store to go on online. And online is a basically a market for a bunch of sharks, right? So all the prices push and converge to a very low price. I mean, you have Mythic Rares, you know, within, within a week going to a dollar, that kind of stuff, right? So that was not a market that's for stores. And that's essentially what happened too. So you combine the factor of like, basically some people doing shady things and dumping cards onto the open market for very cheap, combined with that with a ton of product being absorbed by not stores, but actual individuals on back end, making everyone essentially like small LGSs. And then them, those people converting those cards and getting into the singles game on TCG player, whatever, and selling those cards, right? All these factors brought a bunch of singles into the market and that's what caused this price to fall. What I'm seeing recently, and I don't, know, I don't know if this is because people are literally going back to work so they can't do this business anymore or they realize the margins for magic is like so low. I mean, on a good day, Magic, single, this whole operation where you have to go open boxes, whatever, and search for singles and sell them and whatever, pack, ship, you know, deal with the 1% return. That market's margins is like on a good day, 20, 30%, okay? 
on a bad day, you might be losing money because what you open isn't even worth what you paid for the box. And so this is the issue now, right? So a lot of people, I think, got out of the market. So now we're coming into December of 2023. And what appears to me is that there's actually a lot of, like, a lot less sellers that are selling these cars, singles on the open market. I myself have backed away from opening mass, mass box opening, and I'm sure a lot of other people have done that too, which allows a lot of the stores to essentially, like, have another chance, right? And now that's why it's pushing some of the prices up. Overall, I think this is actually really healthy for the market. Look, you don't want cars to be super expensive. I do think that having a play set of Shieldred being like, like $480, $500 for a play set of Shieldred is a little too much. However, um, however, I think, sorry, not 500, $320, right? However, I do th also think that, you know, having all the cars being worthless is a big problem for stores who are literally, this is their lifeblood. And if you play at a store, like that store won't exist. And I've known quite a few stores in the Bay Area specifically that have closed recently and within I, recently as in within last year or so due to the fact that, well, guess what? The business can't go on. Um, you know, some, some of these stores have to deal with theft. Some of these stores have to deal with like, you know, um, whatever, like to basically a dying business, you have dead inventory that they can't sell. I mean, a lot of these, you know, I've been to a couple of these store liquidations, you know, kind of chatting with the owners, helping them, you know, organize store and deal with kind of dis disassembling the store. And it's like a bunch of dead card games that they can't sell, that they paid $20, $30 per, let's say, box of something, right? Starter decks, et cetera. And now they can't even sell that thing for five bucks. And, you know, selling at a 75% uh, loss is not even possible for these stores. And that's basically where a lot of stores are, right? Their, their capital is tied in that inventory. And so that's why they have to go away. So overall, I think right now, I see signs of the magic singles market and the sealed market kind of recovering. I do think we're still kind of in a, a low. And I think the last, like this whole Black Friday, um, while we didn't have any Amazon dumps, TCG player did do a very big and generous, like 15% for subscribers and 10% for everyone else, cash back type of uh, event. And you know, this was obviously not targeted just for Magic, but obviously Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, um, you know, Flesh and Blood, these other card games, definitely had a big wave of sales during this time. I myself had a very good, I guess, sales weekend um, during this event. So. I think it's a pretty big deal for a lot of stores uh, that, that were able to essentially dump a lot of inventory during this time. So overall, that's positive, right? All this stuff is very positive for the entire uh, trading card game ecosystem. So I don't know what to think right now, but I do see signs of recovery. I wonder if, you know, and, and Magic in its, you know, because Magic still commands a large audience. There's a lot of people who are part of the game and they are willing to spend a lot of money. Any small variations of things like pr reducing print run, adjusting how the cards are, and let's be honest, Lost Caverns of Ixalan has very powerful cards. So this allows a lot of the cards to be playable in many, many different formats, and people are gonna see different options and gobble up those singles, right? This is causing there to be some more of a recovery. Now, if Wizards of the Coast can combo this with like a smaller print run, of each set have, I mean, I think maybe currently this whole 10 set type of thing per year release schedule, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's totally working and it's kind of helping with their bottom line. But if they can just kind of like scale back the initial release a little bit, right? I'm not saying that they even need to print less products overall, but just in that initial release, scale it back a little bit, hold more stuff in the warehouse, wait for those reorders from, you know, like distribution and then gauge and, do better numbers. Like you really don't want another like Crimson Vow uh, Midnight Hunt situation where you way overprint the boxes and you have to dump them afterwards, right? So a lot of those boxes during that era, gonna be honest, they're gonna have a very tough time recovering because those boxes were printed during a time when there was just way too much product, even if it was like a very hot market essentially for magic. But now we're coming into a market that feels to me like it's recovering. Feels to me like a lot of Confidence is slowly coming back. It's not fully back yet. And if the, the formats are good, if the formats feel natural, they feel you know meaningful, then I think the cards, the singles will absorb. If there are gonna be more events, this is another key part, right? Um, Magic obviously cannibalizing itself using Arena, basically 
kills the whole standard format because people play standard on arena they don't really do that on in paper but if there's more like you know local events or in-person events for standard i can see a lot of these cards especially within printed within the last you know three years really going higher in price again because if you, can, you need to show up to these events with your decks right and you need to buy those cards so that is where i see some light and i see some potential so yeah not not anywhere near to say hey everything's good magic is recovering but there are some positive signs that i'm seeing so far now what do i think about the next year of magic well that's a longer question and uh let's just reserve it for another video so i'm gonna end it here mark from solar games hey it's nice to be back i hope you all had a great holiday weekend holiday whatever month and we're going to another holiday month so you know have fun merry christmas yeah happy thanksgiving whatever those things are and uh remember always stay classy See ya.